Here's Lou Riddick. Here's Lou Riddick talking about the prospects of Coach Prime being an NFL head coach. The NFL needs someone like Deion Sanders, wow. quite honestly. He fits the NFL. It's a matter of whether or not the NFL fits him. That's the issue, whether it's what? Dallas or anywhere else. Because let me just tell you this. Anybody who knows that man, he takes a backseat to nobody. Right. Nobody. Not an owner, not players, not other coaches, nobody. And for him to come to the NFL right now and have to deal with mega millionaires who don't want to practice, who don't want to play hard, who don't want to sacrifice, who don't want to listen, that would send him through the roof. CK, how the hell did Deion Sanders get that much power in the NFL? (laughs) Why is Deion Sanders in a position where it's, oh, it's not about how well positioned he is to get a head coaching job. It's if the NFL is right for him. He not, had that a, much sway right now? Not a team. Because we've seen coaches decline jobs because the team set up for disaster. Yeah. A league. A league. We got to make sure that the, the professional, the National Football League, which, again, <laughs> has has done its best to, to protect the shield and strip any human being for ever thinking that they have any kind of power over it. Literally, Lamar Jackson coming off of MVP seasons and being one of the greatest quarterbacks we've seen in that shortest span, the most winningest quarterbacks. The Ravens showed him what was good and, and stripped him of all of his powers. Franchise tagged him, convinced other owners not to go after him, and then signed him to a deal that was probably below his market. He's outplaying it right now. We just saw Bill freaking Belichick. Bill Belichick, the guy, yeah, remember him? Yeah, like, uh, yeah, six rings. Bill Belichick with the Patriots, Patriot way, two decades of dominance, not over, no, not only over a division, but over the National Football League. This offseason, when the Patriots and Bill Belichick decided to move on from each other, and I'll take the power out, by the way. That was for dramatic effect. But when the Patriots and Bill Belichick, quote unquote, decided to mutually part, Bill was trying to get a, a head coaching job in this league. And he couldn't. Couldn't get one with the Falcons. Apparently the Jaguars didn't get off of Peterson in time to get Bill Bell. Like He wanted to be a, a head coach in this National Football League. He couldn't even get interviews at certain places. And you're telling me that Deion Sanders, and I'm not hating on him for it. I'm, I'm happy for Deion. I'm, I'm happy for Coach Prime. Get it how you live. But how have we gotten to our, a place in America, a place in the National Football League where a guy who has never even won a single game as a coach has more power, more sway, more influence than Bill freaking Belichick, who we all agree is the greatest coach of all time? Is it NFL franchises kind of come to terms with it's really hard to be good at the NFL, but with one hire, you can make your team interesting? Yeah, that hire usually could be Bill at Belichick. Like it, it would make you interesting as well, even if he doesn't make you good. Who, who should be more likely to make you good in no, one year? But Bill Belichick won't give you headlines. We'll yes, make he the will. headlines about Bill uh, after he's hired, after like a week later. The fact Bill that Belichick, he's there we is know. the headline. You're yeah, but, saying that he, you're saying Deion Sanders is going to say things and, yes. and okay, okay. He's going to sell merchandise. Yeah, he's going to put your franchise further on the map. I heard I heard Adam Schefter on uh, Unsportsmanlike. I, I don't know if it was this morning or, or yesterday morning. We don't have the audio, but I'll summarize what he pretty much was making the point to uh, Evan Cohen, Chris Canty, and Michelle Smallman. Unsportsmanlike, 6 to 10 a.m. here on ESPN 106.3. He said people always point to Eli Manning, you know, forcing the Chargers to not get him, end up forcing his way to the Giants as, yes, it's been done before. That's what Deion's going to do with Shador Sanders. Forget the whole Deion getting a head coaching job. Let's start with him saying that he's going to influence the NFL draft and get Shador Sanders into the uniform he'd like to see him in. Schefter said, there have not only been players in the past who have tried that method and failed time after time after time, he specifically pointed out a current favorite for rookie of the year this year who doesn't want to be who didn't want to be with his franchise and tried to force his way to another situation in Jaden Daniels. He said Jaden Daniels wanted to be with the Las Vegas Raiders with his former guy uh, Antonio Pierce but was unable to do so. Now, of course, it's a happy marriage now because they're winning and all is well and I'm sure Jaden is happy to be a commander but he just tried to do it and that was a Heisman winning quarterback out of LSU. Apparently, time after time, since the Manning thing with the Giants, people have tried and failed at it. So, when you're Lou Riddick, 
when you're Damian Woody, when you're whoever else is on those desks talking and par- parading about how Deion Sanders and Shador Sanders are going to team up in the NFL. He's going to pick the spot for his son to play quarterback. He's going to become the head coach, and they're going to take the keys to a franchise, one of these 32 heavily protected franchises. I am not refuting what you're saying. All I'm saying is how the hell did we come to a place where Deion Sanders has more power and sway than the players of the past who couldn't direct where they were going to get drafted by and a guy like Bill Belichick who couldn't even find a head coaching job? He's going to do both in one offseason? That's crazy. I think we're at this place because you look at how many bad, definitively bad football teams there are. I think it all loops back to that. If there were less teams that knew their fate, then maybe we have less gullible teams. Right. But right now you see zero path forward for the Giants. You see, I mean, it looks looking bleak for the Dallas Cowboys in terms of path forward after this season. Yeah. Browns, we know the situation there, but they're kind of stuck with Deshaun Watson. Raiders. They're, they are at ground zero of that franchise. Both quarterback and coach are right. Up. So that's why I have a list here. I have a list of where a place where I can see quarterback and coach change over this offseason. Okay. And that's what you were kind of getting at right there. So Browns, I can see that. Obviously, the quarterback position is wide open. Kevin Stefanski probably voluntarily gets fired and finds a new place to work. So the Browns, maybe that could work. The New York Jets. They don't have a quarterback going forward. Aaron Rodgers, if anything, is going to be a one-year rental again next season. He shouldn't be. He should retire. And head coaching-wise, again, got an interim in place. If you're a Jets fan, you're happily signing up for that new carnival to come to town. Yeah, you are. You didn't like this carnival. This carnival stunk. They ripped you (laughs) off. You'll go sign up for the next one. That might honestly be the most likely or the most palatable situation for both parties involved. Prime and Shador in New York. And you move on from Aaron Rodgers and you go, it's a completely different trajectory. I think that's the most right. like, I mean, likely scenario. Just fire the GM. Yeah. New guy comes in. I've got this big grand idea. Let's <laughs> trade up wherever we are in the draft. I know we won a couple of games. It's going to be difficult for the Jets. They, to only really three get up wins. There. they only got three wins right now. They could get it. Yes. But again, you're underestimating how bad a lot of the NFL is. There's a lot of two win teams. There's a lot of two win teams. It only takes two of them to take yeah. up those two yeah. spots. Yeah, you're right. So, yes, you're right. That could be the idea for the Jets. How about the Giants? Like you said, Dayball, as good as he's been in the past, it's not like he's one of those coaches that you feel you can't move on from. When you have to put a statement out midseason that you're not going to fire a guy like the Jim Mara had to do about Brian Dayball, that tells you enough about what his job security actually is. And Mara's done this in the past, by the way, making a statement about keeping a coach and then not happening. Yeah. We've seen that happen in the past, well, five years. The Giants are definitely on the table. <laughs> yeah, They're definitely on the table as they've benched Daniel Jones Not for Drew Locke, but for Tommy DeVito, which means they're definitely trying to lose games and get to the top of the draft. The Titans, you you have no clue what you want to do at quarterback right now. The question is, is Bill Callahan, uh, who's who's just now wrapping up his first season, does he have enough goodwill? Does he have enough, uh, you know, faith from the leadership there to retain his job? It was weird when they fired Mike Vrabel in the first place last year. It'd be even stranger if you fire Bill Callahan or Brian Callahan one season in. And then you have the Saints who fired their coach Dennis Allen already. You got Riz, the Riz man, or whatever they call him, I forget, uh, you know, in, as the interim right now, and you don't have a quarterback either in, over there. I don't know if they'll, they'll lose enough games. I got to check the bottom of the standings again in the NFL. But Yeah, Saints 4-7, and seven, and yeah. they got nine teams ahead of them yeah. for that tankathon. So those are the teams that are realistic because the quarterback and the coaching spots are slightly open. The teams that get, keep getting talked about – well, specifically, one of the teams that keeps getting talked about is the Dallas Cowboys, and it doesn't make sense. Not because Mike McCarthy is not movable, but because you're paying Dak Prescott $60 million a year for the next four years. It wouldn't be advisable to get off of that contract until at least two years into it. And at that point, Shador, the heir apparent, the chosen one, and his father, well, he'd be entering his third year. You're not even getting the benefits of the rookie contract at that point. I, 